If you haven't watched the previous training video on absolute references, well, this one on mixed references is going to be mixed for you, pun intended. You may want to watch absolute so you have an idea of what I'm going to be talking about here. Because a mixed reference is a combination of a relative reference and an absolute. So let's start from scratch. First off, what you're looking at here is the commission rates that I set for the areas north, south, east, and west for each quarter. And we want to multiply those commission rates by the total sales we have for each quarter. And that's how we're going to get our total commission for each area. So for the commission rate quarter one for area north, they get 12% of the total sales because they did okay as opposed to west. Woohoo! They really worked hard, so they get a bigger chunk of a percentage of the total sales for quarter one. So to start, we want to figure the commission rate for the north. We're going to use a simple formula, hit the equals key on the keyboard to take the total sales for quarter one, and you can see it's commission for quarter one. So the total sales to multiply, and the symbol for multiplication is asterisk, so go ahead and type that in. And we want to multiply it by the percentage that they get of the total sales for quarter one. Select that cell, that's it, hit enter, we're done. But the problem that we run into if we're not inputting this and typing it in every single cell, which could be a little bit timely, as opposed to copying and pasting the formula, which we can go ahead and do by selecting the cell and then hovering over the bottom right hand corner, and getting the black cross, the autofill handle with a double click, automatically copies and pastes the formula into the adjacent cells in that column, row by row. But we get a bunch of gobbledygook. So we've got zero, which, hey, that's not a good commission because 15% of two and a half million dollars is not zero. So what's happening is that when you double click on the cell, you can see that it's a relative reference. We have nothing to tell this formula to always stay in that row for this column. So when we go down one row, this also is relative and goes down a row. And so when you go down two rows, as we go down to east, then it goes down to com Q1, or commission for quarter one. So it's taking that, a combination of text and one number there, and multiplying it by 10%. What's the value of that? It can't compute multiplying text with a percentage. And so hit the escape key, double click, and you can see, and then it goes down for 17% multiplied by what's below that, because we went down three rows. So it's going to go down three rows. Hit the escape key. Let's go back to the original cell here, double click. And what we need to do is we need to go ahead and tell it that for this reference, D6, to not make it relative, to always stay in that row. The column we don't care about because we're not copying it over to the next column or to the column in front of it, but just the row. So what we can do, as you recall in the previous training video, to add an absolute reference, just go ahead and click in front of the cell. And you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either hit the F4 key, and it adds the dollar signs for both the column and the row, which you don't need it for both. I mean, it doesn't hurt it if you put it in there, as far as what we're doing right now, copying it row by row. So having a dollar sign or the absolute reference for D isn't going to make a difference. But if you hit the F4 key again, it toggles over to removing the reference from column D to row 6, F4 again. Then it goes to column D, but not row 6, F4 again. And it removes the absolutes completely from D6. So there's the toggle F4, but since I don't want to toggle through it, I just want to add the dollar sign quickly to row 6 so it doesn't update as I copy and paste down row by row. Then let's go ahead and just type in the dollar sign for 6, and that's it. Hit enter, and then when I come back up here, and I click or double click on the black cross in the lower right hand corner for that formula to quickly copy and paste it into all the adjacent cells down below, it works. Well, let's double check. Let's go ahead and randomly pick a cell here and double click on it to see. If it's referencing the total sales for quarter one and multiplying it by the commission, yes. So it's staying on that row, row six. It doesn't update it as I copy and paste the formula down row by row. Cool. Let me hit the escape key to get back out of that. And then next, we want to go ahead and copy this formula and configure it for the sales in quarter two, multiply it by the same commission 12%, quarter three, and quarter four. So if I hover over the lower right-hand corner of that cell until I can see the black cross, and then I click and drag it over to the right and let go, what the fudge? What's happening? What are these pound symbols? The pound symbol represents a larger number that cannot be seen in that column. So instead of giving you a partial number, like let's say we couldn't see all these numbers, we could only see three. Well, our total commission is three bucks. That's deceptive, right? So since it can't show you all the number, it's not going to show you any part of it, so you're not deceived. So what you can do, if you want to see the number, well, you can hover over the cell and you can see in the pop-up, that's a huge number. Or you can come up here to the right of that column header 
until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions and you can click and drag and drag it until you can finally see the entire number because Excel is not going to show you partial numbers because that's deceptive. Or better yet, if I click and drag it and push it back in, and then the shortcut for doing this is called the auto fit with the mouse hovered over in between those two column headers, but to the right of the column that you want to expand, double click really fast and it does a best fit or an auto fit. It takes a cell that has the most content and fits the column to that. And so it stretches it out and we can see it there. Ooh, cool. I don't want to do that. Let's hit undo a couple of times so we can go back to about the size it was before because that's not correct. Because if you take a look at it and double click within the cell, what's the reference? It's not taking the 12% over here and multiplying it by the cells in quarter two, is it? It's going to commission that we earn in quarter one and multiplying it by the cells in quarter two, in which case we bankrupt the company because they can't handle that big of a number. So what we have to do now is we have to tell it to stay in column C when we copy and paste it over column by column. And so we're looking at the reference D9, red to red here, right? And the name of the column is not D because that's the one that we're in if we want it to stay in C. So when we copy and paste, it doesn't keep moving over and over. So when I hit the escape key and go to the last one to double click, because we moved over three columns, when we clicked and dragged it, it went over three as well. One, two, three. Ugh. So let's hit the escape key. Let's go back to the original formula here and double click and add an absolute reference to the column C. So when we copy it over column by column, that dollar sign in front of the C tells Excel, do not move out of this cell here, or this column more specifically, when we copy and paste it over into the next column. So to do that, we'll go ahead and add a dollar sign in front of it, and that's it. Now, it's called mixed references is because we've got a dollar sign for one reference of the cell, which is referring to the column, and one without, which makes it relative. That is, is if we go down row by row, it'll update row by row. But since we're going over column by column, it's going to update it column by column, except that we added a dollar sign or an absolute reference that says don't do that. Stay in the same column. It doesn't hurt again to go ahead and do dollar signs for both if we're just going over column by column. But to get a little bit more particular, we'll just go ahead and add it to the C because that's the only thing we're focusing on is to keep it in column C. So go ahead and hit enter and then select the cell that contains the correct formula now. And you can see up in the formula bar, we have mixed references for D6, which means keep it on row six when we go down. So that makes sense because we're multiplying quarter one by all the percentages here. And when we go over column by column, keep it in the C column, don't update it and move it over from 12% commission to multiply it by well, the commission for quarter one. So hover over again, the lower right hand corner until you can see the autofill handle, click and drag it over to the right, let go. Hey, that works. Fabulous. But wait, let's double check. Go ahead and double click inside of a cell and make sure that the commission rate for column three for area north is taking the cells for quarter three and multiplying it for the commission that's been assigned to the north, 12%. Cool. And hit enter. And so let's finish this up. If I go ahead and select the entire row here, and with that selection, hover over the lower right hand corner to get the black cross and double click really fast. Cool. Now let's double check to make sure it's right. So we'll select a cell at random and double click. It looks good. For the east, we got the commission rate. For the total cells of quarter three multiplied by it, that's going to give us what we want. Totally tinsel. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as soon as I upload a new video, you'll be notified instantly. And you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face. You can also click here to support me, so for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad-free, and for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.